So, uh, man, listen, today, uh, I need y'all to really pray for me. I have been in a battle. I stay in a battle a lot. But today's word is going to be very challenging for some. Very challenging for some. So uh, I need you to pray for me because I'm not going to lie. I've, I've wrestled with this. felt like my hip got thrown out of socket. <laughs> Had a Jacob moment. And uh, wrestled with the Lord. Wanted to back off, back out. Didn't want to preach it because I thought it would offend some people. And God's like, why are you making this something that it's not? Because I think a lot of times the devil will mess with your mind to scare you, the scare tactic. To make you back out from preaching the truth. And so here's, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach today. The Bible says, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I, all I'm asking y'all to do today, I need you to listen. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Have an, and watch this, have an open mind. Quit closing the Holy Spirit out of your life. So you need to have an open mind. How many of you, this, this is a question that helped describe a lot what's going on. How many of you are still a student under the Holy Spirit? If your hand's not up, you're in trouble. Yeah, you, you need, I, I pray we all are students of Jesus Christ. I pray for wisdom. I pray for knowledge. And I pray that we all remain a student of Jesus Christ. A student, a student, always learning, 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 learning. How many of y'all are a student now? Come on, talk to me. You're still learning. Yeah, how many of y'all, tell me, y'all have not figured all this stuff out live. We've not figured this out. I've got the alphabet in front of my name. But watch this. Here's what I have found out. The more I thought I knew, <laughs> the more I thought I, I didn't really get it. So listen, today I want to I preach, teach, and minister on the subject today. Y'all hang with me, all right? I need, I need y'all to lean in. Baptized in fire. Baptized in in fire. Come on, baptized in fire. Baptized in fire. One more time, baptized in fire. Woo, I feel that. Let me say it one more time. I felt it. Come on, somebody. Baptized in fire. Let's stay right there just for me because I felt something. Baptized in fire. Let's say it one more time. Come on. Baptized in fire. Now let's give God a praise for the baptism of fire. Yeah. I, there, the Bible talks about two baptisms. Come on now. The problem is, including myself, we have only been told about one baptism, water baptism. But watch what the Bible says. Now listen to me. Religion's a hard spirit to break. We, 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 we was born in the Bible Belt. This is the way it is. It's the way it's always been. Now listen, I'm not trying to put the scare tag. I'm going to read the Word, and here's what this. When, when the leaves fade and the grass withers, watch what happens. The Word's going to stand. When we stand before God, God's not going to pull out an Oprah Winfrey and say, what would you think, Oprah? God's going to pull out the Bible. You will be judged on according to what the Bible says, not what church says, not what religion says, not what Rafferty says. It's what the Bible says. Y'all understand how important it is to take your life from the Bible, the Word. Man don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of his mouth. He lives by the bread, the life, the Word of God. So watch what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 to my note takers. Read now the NIV. Y'all ready for a word? Here we go. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. This is John. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. Y'all hang with me. Water for repentance. Lord, come into my heart. Save me, Lord. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Lord, save me. You have repented. The next step to your life is water baptism. Everybody say water baptism. I'm, it, it's probably more of a teaching today than it is anything, but that's okay. A preacher should be able to preach and teach. So the next thing for you, if you are a child of God, you know Jesus Christ, you've been forgiven of your sins, you've repented of your sins, get baptized. Get baptized. 
We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But I love this. There's a comma, but. Watch this. After me comes one who is more powerful than me. Than I, whose sandals I am not even worthy to carry. Carry. A lot of people say untie. He says, I'm not even worthy to carry Jesus' sandals. He, Jesus, will baptize you. Hold on. That's two baptisms in these verses. Right baptize you with water into repentance. But he said, he, Jesus, will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit and fire. So you may fight with me. You won't win with that. You can't fight against this. So you say, all right, let me, let me give y'all some more. Let me give you some more. Acts chapter 1. Here we go. It's the book of Acts. You daggone skip it. Because the book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that does not end with amen. So what that means is this, what God started in the first century church, not the 21st, even though we're included, when he started in the first century church, he didn't say, amen, so be it, let it be. It means this, it's still going on today. And I'm looking at the church right now. So watch this, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, and we'll skip down to verse 8. It's all right if I read y'all scripture. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, not, not a suggestion, See, we think God gives us suggestions. He commands us to love. Do not leave Jerusalem. He said, I'm commanding you. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Everybody say, but wait. But wait for the gift. The baptism of fire is a gift. My Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. Verse 5. For John, here he is. Let me go back. For John baptized you with water. But in a few days, whoo, God will, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Here's why. Verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Well, I don't want power. Well, I'm just telling you, it takes the Holy Ghost to live down here. And you will be my witnesses. Why does God say, I'll give you the fire of the baptism? He said this, why? He said, because it's got to come upon you. And then you can be my witnesses of Judea, Samaria, and the most ends of the earth. Acts chapter 2. Let's go on. I got a bunch of scripture. Because I know how people are like, well, yes, yes, no, I've got a bunch. And here's, this is just a little bit. Acts chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. Where did it come from? Heaven, and fill the whole house where they were all sitting. That's my prayer today. They saw that seemed to be tongues of fire. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire, tongues of fire. That separated, and watch this, and then came to rest on each of them. The Holy Spirit will rest on you. Some of them were filled. No, hold on. Is that what y'all say? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine's right now. I got it now. I got it now. I got it now. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them, every single one of them, male and female, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. <laughs> All right, listen, I, I'm going I'm to I'm read Scripture till y'all get it. Acts chapter 11, verse 15 through 17. As I began to speak, whoo, the Holy Spirit came on them. As I begin to speak today, I pray that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he can't look. He had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. I forgot about what's happening to me. John baptized with water. But you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 17, so if God gave them the same, uh-oh, so now the disciples really got a question. So here it is. So if God gave the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus, who was to think that I could stand in God's way? You better be very careful 
when you go standing in God's way. Listen to me, you better be very careful when you go standing in God's way. You better, you better be very careful. Now, I know there's a lot of fake. I know there's a lot of cons, but I'm going to tell you something. When you get burnt by fire, you'll never forget it. You, you can run. You can do whatever you want to do. When you get burnt by fire, you'll never forget it. As a matter of fact, it'll mark you. It'll mark you. It'll mark you. Well, let me give you some, let me give you some more. Matthew chapter 3, we may just be able to read Scripture today. That'd be good, too. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Matthew 3, verse 16 to 17. As soon as Jesus was baptized with water, he went up out of the water. Listen to this. At that moment, heaven was opened. Y'all believe the Bible? Y'all, y'all, come on. Y'all, but you believe the Bible. I want to hear it. Y'all, y'all believe this Bible. Heaven was opened up. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Resting, coming upon him. Landed on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love and whom I am well pleased. Take a note if you're a note taker. The Spirit was already in Jesus. He's Jesus, right? Come on, I'm going to teach you. The Spirit was already in Jesus. He was Jesus. He was, watch, he was 30 years old before he even started his ministry. But watch this. Before he started his ministry, he had to have the dove on him. He had to, what did the dove do? Watch, the dove equipped him to do what God had called him to do here on earth. How many of y'all have heard this before? There's been pastors, there's been, there's been leadership, there's been people all their life they serve God and they just don't do nothing. They don't do nothing. You know why? The dove's not on them. Oh, the, watch, watch. Come on. I know. Listen to me. I'm, I'm trying to teach. They're saved. They know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. But I'm telling y'all, listen to me. When the dove lands on you, when the dove is on your life, I got, the, I got Jesus in me. But the dove, watch this, is on me this morning. And I'm telling y'all that it does something for your life. It makes you love everybody. You watch this. If the dove is on you and his spirit is in you, you can't hate nobody. Wow, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. If the dove is on you and his spirit is in you, you'll love everybody. You can't hate nobody. You'll have a spirit that will forgive everybody. Like that. Like that. I know what I'm talking about. Prove me wrong. Give me, give me one verse, 31,173 verses in your Bible. Give me one. It says, he just gave it to the disciples. You give me one verse, 31,173, where he says, after I did the first century church of Acts, I was done. You can't find it. I can tell you this, this is another scripture, Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday today and forevermore. How many of you are thankful that God just didn't love Peter, James, and John? He loves Willie. He loves Brian. He loves Bobby. He loves her. He loves all of us. And watch this. Can I just be honest with y'all? We need the dove on us to live out this life every day here on earth. People cussing you out. People mean to you. All the shooting, all the killing, all the things going on in this earth, all the COVID-19. We need the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to fight for him today. Y'all can look at me like sideways. I'm going to fight for him today. I'm going to fight for him today. Watch this. John, can I give y'all one more? I'm done. I'm not really. Here, I'm going to give you one more verse. John 14, 12. We know this. We quote this. But I'm asking you this. Do you believe this? Because listen to me. If this ain't real, we're in trouble. If there's one lie in this Bible, all of it's a lie. I choose it's real. I don't understand it all, but I submit to it all. Watch this. Here's what John 14, 12 says. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that's King James. NIV says, verily, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things. 
than these because I'm going to the Father. So what does that mean? That means now the Holy Ghost and Spirit is in me, but the dove is still on me. How in the world can we, he's, I'm talking to you today, how can you do greater works than Jesus? It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called the Holy Spirit. I believe, and I may be one of these pastors, just whatever, I still believe you can lay hands upon a sick and watch them recover. I, I believe, and I'm backing everything up with Scripture. I still believe in tongues. I believe in prophecy. I do believe there's some ignorant people out there that says Coca-Cola, and that's a Coca-Cola bottling company. It's on, it's on water tire bypass. There, there's people that tries and they don't do it. But here's what I'm going to tell you. It's real. It's real. It's real. And I'm just wondering, who's, who's worse off? The one judging them? Or the ones trying? At least trying. At least trying. I'm going to try. I've never done, but I'm going to try. You know what I'm saying? But you got some people, watch this. There's a different, oh, God just spoke this to me so good. I love when God speaks like this. The people that's water always try to put the fire out. Let me make this very clear. Greater is he that is in us, he is in the world. I know some of you have been baptized with water. Wonderful. It's, it's for repentance. It's what the Bible says. But my prayer today, and as I was standing back there, me and Drew was praying, and my prayer today is that every single one of you will not just be baptized with water, but every single one of you will be baptized in fire. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. If, if you don't want it, I'll take your portion. That's right. And let me make this very clear before I get into here. Listen, I don't even know where I'm going right now. It's crazy. I'll make this very, very clear. You do not. Listen to me. You do not. Everybody say, you do not. Watch. You do not. I'm going to get in trouble with this one. You do not have to be baptized in water or fire to make it to heaven. You do not. You do not. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Let's, let's do a good Bible study. Y'all ready? Come on. Y'all ready? Oh, God, help me. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and be baptized with water and fire. Hold on just a minute. Let me go back. My, I have a different translation. Oh, here it is. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Church will not get you to heaven. Being a good old Baptist won't get you to heaven. Going, being a tither, come on somebody, will not get you to heaven. Speaking in tongues, prophesying will not get you to heaven. But there is a name that is above all names. The name of Jesus Christ to every knee. We'll bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. He is God. Somebody help me today. Listen, listen, I'm trying to help. There's been a lot of you just get wet. Listen, you get in the baptistry all day. You may go in dry and come out wet. But if there's not been a transformation, here's your sign. You're not saved. You're not saved. You're not saved. And we live in the Bible Belt. Everybody's saved. It's just, the, it's just the way it is. You read the newspaper, they were a Christian. But they never went to church. They never served God. They, they cuss you out. They, they tell dirty jokes. They live like the devil. They do all these things. Listen, there's a difference. If you're born again and you're saved, here's why you need the Holy Ghost. It'll change your life forever. Amen. You won't want to tell dirty jokes. You won't want to live a bad life. You won't want to mistreat people. You won't want to do bad things in your life. Because you know why? You got a convictor in you. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. All right. So here's what I wrote in my notes too. I do believe as your pastor, it is very, very important if you're saved to get baptized with water. It's, it's very important. You say, Brian, I'm a Christian. Do y'all realize if you don't get baptized, you're living in disobedience? And you're wanting a blessing? And see, here's some of you. You're so blessed, you're sitting there going, well, golly. 
I'm blessed. Why do I got to get baptized? Because Jesus said so. Because Jesus said, follow my command. The first thing that Jesus did was he was baptized by John, Matthew chapter 3. The dove was on him, and then he went into ministry. Some of you want to go into ministry just being baptized. Man, it's so deep in here. So what what is water baptism? Is it all right if I teach? What is water baptism? Because listen, if you just come for a shout today, you're here for the wrong reason. My people perish because of lack of knowledge, lack of wisdom. There's some people here today, I guarantee you, you're so mad right now because I'm preaching on baptism and fire, you will never receive a blessing. You won't. You won't do it. So what, 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 is, what is water baptism? Everybody say, what is water baptism? I'm glad y'all asked. It, it, it equals obedience. It's just obedience. Well, look at me, it's just obedience. It's just obedience. You know what, what it is? It's an it's a inward confession. It's, it's an outward confession what happened to you inwardly. You got people here today that need to be baptized. Here's what I'm telling you. Listen to me. Do you have to be baptized? I heard, I heard this shit. It's so funny. People said, well, you got to be baptized on Sunday. <laughs> what Bible, what translation, my God, are you reading from? God owns Sunday, God owns Monday, God owns Tuesday, God owns Wednesday, God owns the week. He is the maker of creation. He owns every day. If you've not been baptized and you're scared to get in front of people, watch this. We will fill this baptistry up and you can come to my office. I'll have my swim trunks on. And if you want me to put a white robe on, I'll put a white robe on too. Hey, 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 hey. And I'll baptize you in the greatest name in creation. On earth and in heaven, his name is Jesus Christ. Man, Camelsville was so religious. 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 What's fire baptism? There's a difference. There's a difference. Water baptism means your obedience to God. Fire baptism means that you have finally surrendered. You have finally submitted. You have finally said, you know what? There's got to be something more to this Christian life than me just going to church and tithing and teaching Sunday school and driving a van on Wednesday. There's got to be something else in this life that I need. You know what it is? It's the fire of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is. It is. I was talking to a pastor about a year ago. This pastor said, I've never won a soul to Jesus Christ. And I wanted to tell him, you need to get out of the ministry. Because here's what I'm saying. When the dove is on you and the spirit is in you, I'm just telling you, when it lands on you, people will recognize there's something different about your life. There is evidence, there is proof, there is fruit that God is in me. I can't live, I can't act, I can't talk like the world. Why? Because not only is he in me, he is on me. Where I go, he goes. I can't get away from him. He's here right now and he's here out there. He's here in America and he's here in China. He's everywhere. Everybody say he's everywhere. He's everywhere. So why? Why do we need to be baptized in fire? Because I get this question a lot, a lot, a lot. Why do we need to be, why do you, let's make this personal. Why do you need to be baptized in fire? Here we go. Y'all ready? Say, I'm ready. Help me, Holy Ghost. Fire gives you power. Fire gives you power. Everybody say, fire gives me power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I've had people look at me and they say, Brian, I don't understand. You are a divorced man. This is, this is south though, south, south, south. You can teach Sunday school and play the piano and cook in the kitchen. But when it comes to that, 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 that deletes out the anointing of God upon your life. I've literally had people come to me and say, Brian, I don't understand. You're a divorced man. How can God use you? No, seriously. I said, if God can use a donkey, 
You say, Brian, did you just call yourself a donkey? Oh, yeah. I act like one sometimes. How about y'all? Turn to your neighbor and say, you act like one too. Come on. Yeah. Everybody say, it gives me power. Come on, it gives me power. That when the enemy walks in this room, he can't stay very long because I'll bind him by the authority of God. When the devil is on your life, I will take power over your life. I'm telling y'all, he gives you power to call things that are not as though they are. He gives you power. And I'm just telling you, he said, disciples, listen to me, men, women of God, you stay, you wait until you receive. That's New Testament, by the way. That's the first century church, by the way. Well, Brian, there's a big difference. I highly advise the 21st century church to go back the way God intended her to be. Don't y'all think that's pretty wise? Yeah. We try to tell God what we're going to do, then say, God bless it. It don't work like that. Because here's why. God says, I know you from the end to the beginning. When God created you, when God put Elkhorn in, in existence, he said, I know who I created Elkhorn to be. I know, Jeremy Hall, I know who I created you to be. And you may mess up, you may fall along the way. But God says, I know who I created you to be. And my word don't come back void. I blew life into you. You became a living soul. And the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 3, you have not because you ask not. Number two, the fire. Why do we need to be baptized by fire? Because it gives you authority. Yeah, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, watch this. Listen, listen to what the Bible says. What the Bible says. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. So could it be the reason why you're at where you're at is because you're not taking authority over the enemy. See, some of you, you don't understand why you're at where you're at. If you talk devil language, that, that draws the devil. You start talking God language, that, is, that distinguishes the enemy. He has to loose his hold because you took authority over him. All authority. Everybody say all authority. All authority. What? In heaven and on earth has been given to you. What about this one, number three? Fire purifies the believer. Fire, watch, fire will burn out the sin in your life. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Would y'all agree with that? First Corinthians chapter three says, you are the temple of the Most High. You are the, the Holy Spirit lives in me. Y'all understand that? And the Holy Spirit cannot stay in a dirty temple. Fire will burn away. It will purify the believer. It will, guys. I'm telling you, fire purifies the believer. Number four, fire helps you produce good fruit. If you are a child of God, born again, saved, watch this, and the Holy Spirit is in you, and, and the Holy Spirit is on you, you will produce good fruit. Y'all got me? We should never have to beg anybody to work in children's church, youth group, do anything. You, we should never have to beg. God, you're going to help me. You will bear good fruit. Everybody say good fruit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will produce fruit of the Spirit. I love this. Listen to me. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will produce fruit of the Spirit. So watch this, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Rest of you say, I'm with you. God bless. But the fruit of the Spirit, if you have the baptism of the Spirit, it will produce good fruit. What, what is good fruit? It's the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Watch this. Love. If you don't get the first one down, you're a sounding gong. You have just played the gong show. You have just entered the gong show. And there's a lot of people, watch this, I'm telling you, I've been there. They, they will get up there and they'll, they'll, they'll try to activate the gifts, this, that, and the other, but they don't have no love. If you don't have love in your life, I'm telling you, you, are, you don't have the dove on you. The fruit of the Spirit, watch, it says love, joy, 
How many of y'all know we got too many sad Christians? We do. Guys, we're going to heaven. We're not going to burn in hell. I'm a, we're alive. We're well. We're here today. And some of you are going to wait till you die to rejoice. And God says the first, second proof of evidence that God is in your life, on your life, is that you'll have joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace. Peace. Brian, how in the world can you have peace when this world is going to hell in a handbasket? Because this world is not my home. And when you get saved and the Spirit comes in and the Spirit is on you, listen, this is key. This is key. You'll think kingdom. I'm going to say it again. You will think kingdom. You will think kingdom. You won't stay up all night worried about your electric bill. Something will reverse in your life. You're sitting there going, God, today, I get a chance and an opportunity to stand behind your pulpit. And God, I get to deliver your word. God, if anybody is lost, God, save them today. Lord, if anybody is disconnected, God, save them today. Lord, you've got to beg Christians to come to church. Here's what I'm saying. Here's why I need the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to beg me to come to church. If a Christian says, well, Brian, I, I just, I don't have to go to church. What Bible, what translation are you reading? Hebrews 10, 25 says, forsake not. And I love old Haywood Reiner. Haywood Reiner says, when we recruited people on the football team, is Reiner here today? No. Haywood, I know you're watching. <laughs> he said, but when we recruited people, and they became a part of Campbellsville University, they didn't go out on the field wearing another jersey. He said, we didn't have to beg them. Because they had a gift called football in their life. When they put the pads on and the jersey on, they would run over you in the name of Jesus. Same way with the child of God. Man, if you are recruited into the kingdom, nobody should have to beg you. You're putting on somebody else's jersey. Man, here's what I know. It'll give you joy. It'll give you peace. It'll give you patience. Watch this. Can I tell you this? I don't have to pray for patience because patience is already in me. Watch this. Some of you go, God, let me, give me love. He's like, it's there. God, give me peace. I'm miserable. It's there. Do y'all understand? He is not a foreign God on a cloud up next to Mars sitting there going, I'll be back in a minute. The Holy Swatch, the Holy Spirit is in us. So if the Holy Spirit is in us, I've got love, I've got joy, I've got peace, I've got patience, I've got kindness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self. Now what y'all gonna do? Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you going to do when they come for you, bad boy, bad boy? Yeah, self-control. Self-control. That means I don't have to cuss people out. Oh, man, it is tight up in Elkhorn today. Why? Because self-control is in me. I don't have to pray for self-control because self-control is in me. I believe some people just wake up sucking on a lemon and mad. That is not Jesus. If you wake up mad, listen, you, you need to have a little talk with Jesus. How can we be mad all the time? Mean to people all the time. And I've got joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control living inside of me. There's no way. There, there is no way. There is, everybody's looking at me. There is no way. 
There is no, because I've got him inside of me. And my mom and my granny said, whatever's inside of you will eventually come out of you. So if you've got a cussing problem, that may be in you. You say, Brian, everybody messes up. Everybody does mess up, but they don't habitually mess up. They don't live in that mess up. They don't stay down because the Bible, <laughs> the Bible says, when the enemy knocks me down six times, I'll get up seven. Woo! Mm -mm 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 -mm. Fire makes you repent quickly. Woo! You, what? Well, <laughs> It's like God saying, you need to repent. Put a cigarette lighter under your hand and say, I'm not repenting, I'm not repenting. I'm, uh, oh God, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a sinner. When the fire's on you, you repent quickly. You don't live 15, 20 years with a grudge in your heart. You, you don't live 20 years mad at somebody. Are y'all okay? So I'm really trying to preach hard, man. Some of y'all are sitting there looking at me like I'm, you cannot live like that. You cannot live like it. Fire makes you forgive quickly. And this is one thing that in my heart, in my life, I had to deal with. It is so easy to sit there and go, well, they did it. Yeah, they did, but what about you? See, when you're laying your head on your pillow at nighttime, and the lights are out, and you know something's wrong in your heart, you got to deal with you. I think with the problem with the churches and religious people and Brian Rafferty and all of us sometimes, it's easy to blame people. And God's sitting here today, sitting there going, I'm talking to you. I've got your digits. I've got your number. I'm dealing with you. What are you going to do about it? So watch this. Praise team, you guys come. Number five, fire helps you fulfill the calling of God on your life. Some of you are waiting for man's approval. A church's approval when God has already approved you. Some of you, you know what the fire done for me? Because listen, if I was listening to people or churches or denomination, I would not be your pastor today. But when the Holy Spirit is in you and he is on you, there's something about that. That no matter, no weapon, no people, no person, no religion, no nothing can stop what God is doing. And I believe what I'm preaching today because why? I'm proof. I'm proof. And when y'all stand before God and you see God says, hey, you know, what's up, man? And you're sitting there going, God, I didn't answer my call because uh, the, the church didn't ordain me. God ordained you. I ordained you and I set you aside. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, why I feel the Holy Ghost, why you was yet in your mother's womb, I ordained you, I set you aside, now what's your excuse? You're waiting for a piece of paper. Y'all can have mine back, I'm going to preach. Dr. James Jones, I'll never forget this, we was in the ordination council and Dr. James Jones, he looked at me, he says, Brian. What if we decide not to ordain you? And I said, Doc, I love you. And I love these mighty men of God. But with a piece of paper or without a piece of paper, I'm going to preach the word. Come on, I need somebody who believes in the forgiving power of Jesus Christ, that you are called, you are ordained, you are set aside. It don't matter what people think, churches think, men may think, you got a calling, you got a calling. Hey! Little Layla's up here on the front row. Hi, 17? If y'all was here two weeks ago, two Wednesdays ago, this little girl, whew, I still feel it. Brian, she's a girl. But Galatians chapter 5 says, there is neither Jew, Jew nor Greek, nor male nor female. Don't, don't shoot the messenger. 
<laughs> Why are you up here, Mary? You're a girl. You should be up there singing out there. Why are you leading worship? <laughs> well, I believe while you was yet in your mother's womb, your mama laid her hand on her belly and said, God, use Mary for your glory. And not only do you have the Holy Ghost in you, hey, you got the Holy Ghost on you. Amen. Y'all just keep standing. Listen, fire helps you fulfill the calling of God on your life. How many of y'all would say, man, I've got junk in my trunk. I've got things going on in my life that I know that, man, they're probably have separated me from Christ. I'm going to make it right today. I need to repent of my sins. I need to get things right with God. You're, you're at the right house. But watch me. Jesus Christ himself did not go. I feel the whole. Jesus Christ himself did not go into the gospel ministry until the dove landed on him. I cannot preach until the dove touches me. Y'all can get up here. You can be, watch, I feel the, You can be talented. You can play a guitar. You can play drums. You can do that on your own. But when the Holy Ghost is pushing the strings, when the Holy Ghost is on the drum set, when the Holy Ghost is setting down, you know what I'm saying? That's the difference. Not only do I got the Holy Ghost in me, I, <laughs> He's on me. Because when God created Brian and Marcus and Brandon, when he created Layla and Destiny, all of us, he created Willie, he created Ben, he created from the end to the beginning. Some of you got a calling on your life. Y'all have told me 59 million times I'm called to preach, I'm called to preach. Answer your call. Here's why, listen. The fire will help you fulfill the calling of God in your life. You will never be, watch, you will never be or do what the Lord, hallelujah, has called you to do without His help. Fire makes you, watch, here's what it does for me. Fire makes me live on purpose. That I finally realized today may be my last worship set. Did y'all worship like that? Today may be the last day that I can raise my hands. We don't know what's going to happen when we go out there. Matter of fact, we don't know what's going to happen in here. Did you, did you worship on purpose today? You know what else it gives me, Jeremy? You know what else I thought about, man? Fire puts an urgency in my life. It puts an urgency that today may be the last time I can say, Joey, I love you, man of God. Dane, I love you. You say, Brian, good gracious. Y'all, go on. Do, do, do what y'all got to do. I'm telling y'all, I've got a life that I'm living on purpose. And there, hallelujah, mm, there's an urgency. There's an urgency in my life right now that I believe somebody is here today. Oh, that you've been, you've been water baptized. You got wet, and listen, that's good. You have repented of your sins. And the main thing is that you're saved and born again and going to heaven. But you're not living on purpose down here. Why? Because of the dove's not landed on you. And so y'all do what you want to do. I'm, I, I preach today what God told me to preach. And y'all can chew on it. You can go home. Just digest it. Don't spit it back out. Because y'all got a decision. Y'all got a decision. Either you're going to chew on this and go, <clears throat> like most people do, or you're going to chew on it and you read Scripture. You say, God, help me swallow this Word. Help me digest this Word. God, help me live for you. God, put the dove on my life. God, put purpose in my life. God, put an urgency in my life. Let me love the way you love. God, give me peace in the midst of a troubled world. God, help me love. So, it gives you power, gives you authority. It purifies the believer. It helps you produce good fruit. And it helps me fulfill the calling of God upon my life. Those are the five things. Listen, I'm not done. I was, I was aiming just to preach one, one, sir, one thing on this, but 
I can't get away from this. We're going to stay on this, in this vein for a little bit. But how many of y'all can say, don't raise your hand. Just listen. You've been baptized by water. You've been baptized by water. Listen. Help me, Holy Ghost. You've been baptized by water. Some of you had not even been baptized by water. You're saved. You're going to heaven. Water won't save you, but water makes you obedient. It puts you in line with God. That way you can go out. You got to go vertical before you go horizontal. But today you're, you're sitting here going, Brian, I, I've been baptized by water for repentance. But that second baptism by fire, this is the first, I've never heard a sermon on it, Willie. You know why everybody's scared of it? And I'm probably going to have hell to pay. But look at me, don't come to me unless you've got Scripture. Because as for me in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're going to follow Jesus Christ. We're going to get hell mad at us. So in Jesus' name, you say, Brian, I've been baptized by water. But today, I want that fire. If that's you in this house, if you want the fire of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now watch me. Let me clear this up. That a lot of people are confused about that. It just means that you're living a fruitful life. You're producing fruit. Yes, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost with fire. It's the evidence of speaking in tongues. I don't push it on y'all. I never will push that on y'all. That is a gift that, that God gives. I don't, I don't give that. I'm just asking y'all to have an open mind. Let God speak to y'all. And just say, God, listen. Lord, I want it. I'm scared. But tell God. Lord, I'm nervous about it. But God, I desire it. I really want it. And if you really want it, God, the Bible says, God says, I will not withhold a good gift from my children. And don't believe everything that y'all see. There's cray-cray out there. So if you want the baptism, the fire baptism, and you're ready to produce fruit here on earth, if Jesus Christ didn't have the dove, he didn't go into the ministry until he had the dove on him. And that's all I'm praying for us, because you know what's going to happen? we become a dove church. So in Jesus' name, if you want the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want you to come to this altar right now in Jesus' name. Come on.